Hi again. This is a review of the Nightwalker MM18JR flashlight. This is a shockingly bright flashlight, and we'll get into that in a minute, but first let's go over the features. First of all, it has output from 1 lumen up to 13,500 lumens. I said it was bright. It uses an interesting combination of emitters to give you a lot of flexibility into how you want the light to shine. It uses four 18650 high drain lithium ion cells. It has an interesting user interface for accessing the most commonly used modes. It has great flood, it has great throw, or you can do both. That's part of the user interface in combination with the LEDs. And of course it has solid construction and all the extras that you'd expect from a high quality flashlight. In a high output flashlight, everyone wants to know how bright it is. So here's the scoop. This light has a lot of different ways you can use it. It first of all has two XHP 70.2 emitters. Those are very large, very efficient, very bright and floody LEDs. And it uses that to produce a lot of flood. And you can use those in six different mode levels, plus a turbo. And also it has a single XHP 35 high intensity emitter. And that is a LED that gives you a lot of throw, a very focused beam. And you can use that on a bunch of different levels. And you can use these emitters at all three at the same time, and that'll give you both flood and throw. And that's that's a very cool combination. I'll get into it a little bit later. And uh, there's a turbo mode that'll put that right up to 13,500 lumens if you use all of them at the same time. Heat management is very good, and the only level that steps down is from turbo back to level six, and that's after one minute. Okay, let's get into showing you some night shots here. The first thing you notice is the light has a lot of flood when you use the two XHP 70.2 emitters. And that's great for seeing all around you. But if you happen upon a trail and you want to see further up, you can click up to the high intensity emitter and that gives you a lot of throw. So that's really good for seeing a long distance. And you can also use both at the same time that gives you that amazing flood plus the throw. Now here's the flood again, and that gives you a good view all around you. Amazing amount of flood from this light. There's the high intensity emitter, gives you a long throw up to 580 meters if you use it in combination with the flood and the throw for on the turbo output, such as this. And that just, it's hard to show in a video just how bright that is. It's amazingly bright. Here's a shot showing you pretty much how it looks like in person in an open field. This is in flood mode only, and those trees are a few hundred meters distant. It just gives you light at the whole field, but doesn't throw a long way in that mode. When you click onto the high intensity emitter, such as this, you can see a long distance. The flood goes away, so it doesn't blind you, but you can see a long distance out to the tree line. And then if you want to crank it up to turbo and use all emitters at the same time, you get that amazing flood and the throw and that is just going to annoy everybody else in that field. All right, let's go over the user interface. It might be a little bit dull, but we'll get through it. First of all, there's three buttons on this light. I'll talk about the two secondary buttons in a minute, but let's just go over the primary button. When you click it on, it uh, has a LED indicator in the light that shows green. If it's showing red, it means the batteries are low and you should stop using the light and charge your cells. So the first time you click the light, that main button, it lights up the two XHP 70 emitters. The second time you click it, it lights up the XHP 35 emitter. The third time you click it, it lights up all three. And then the fourth time you click it, it turns the light off. And so it just cycles around, single clicks, turn on the light, cycle through the different emitters, and then finally turn it off. When you click and hold, which is what this is showing, it cycles through the brightness modes. So if you've entered the flood, for instance, using the two xhp 70s you can crank it up to the particular brightness mode you want and uh, then use the light from that. Or you can do that with the xhp 35 emitter. In this case, you just hold down the button and it'll cycle through the six different mode levels. And then you just release the button when you want it to use that mode that you're, you want. So it, it's pretty basic. It sounds a little complex and there's a lot of different configurations, but it's pretty easy to use. 
There are strobes on this light. There's a very fast strobe you can get by double clicking the switch from off. It's very bright and annoying. And there are some SOS and blinky strobes and stuff when you double click the switch when the light is on. Um, I'm not particularly keen on strobes. They're here in this light if you want, but they're not on any kind of main sequence. So it's, it's nice that they're kind of hidden in that way. Accessing turbo is also very easy. You just click and hold the main button and that immediately kicks the light into turbo. As long as you hold the button, it'll stay on turbo. When we release it, the light shuts off. You can also enter turbo in a more permanent mode by pressing the button again and holding it within three seconds of the last time you use turbo. That sounds complex, but basically you just press turbo twice and that'll leave the light on in turbo for up to one minute. Then the thermal management kicks in and the light will step down to level six. On level six, which is about 9,400 lumens, it'll run indefinitely. Okay, let's go over the secondary buttons. Now this is where I think the light has a very innovative user interface that allows it to be very easily used. Because let's face it, using the main button is fairly complex. You have to step through your different emitter combinations, then you have to step through your brightness modes. Not easy to do. So once you have your favorite mode configured using your main button, press and hold one of the secondary buttons and it will then remember that mode permanently for that secondary button. And then all you need to do when you want to go into your favorite mode is click that secondary button and boom, you're in your favorite mode. Click it again, the light turns off. So it operates very easily then in order to get into the mode you want very quickly and shut the light off very quickly. Now you can set the other secondary button up the same way, select the main mode you want, and then just press and hold that secondary button and boom, it remembers your mode. And then from that point on, you have two different modes you can choose from in either the first secondary button or the second secondary button. You just click one of them and it immediately goes into whatever your favorite mode is. So this takes a fairly cumbersome user interface, which is which you use in the main button, other than turbo, of course, which is just press and hold. And it simplifies it into two other buttons that you just click and immediately you're into whatever mode you want. So I really like that feature. Um, I think this would be a very complex light if you only use one button, but with the secondary buttons, it makes it very easy to use light. By the way, the light also comes with some accessories, some O-rings uh, and a lanyard here, a very sturdy lanyard, and that uh, connects to the light and it's solid for carrying. Okay, let's open the light and show you how to install the batteries. As mentioned before, this takes four 18650 cells. They must be high drain and they will probably be unprotected cells in order to be high drain. It'll take either flat top or button top cells. It has a carrier here that's a very solid construction, very good springs. You simply put in all the batteries into the carrier, then put the carrier back in the light, screw it in. Now the carrier is designed in a way here that you can install it either way around. The positive terminal is on the inside, the negative terminal is on the outside, and that's just the way the light connects up. So you don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong way. Just make sure you put the batteries in the right way. Pay close attention to the color of the switch LED. When it goes red, it means your batteries have dropped below 12 volts, which is three volts per cell. And at that point, you should stop using the light and charge your batteries. This light does not have low voltage protection. And even if it did, you can't rely on it because the batteries, there's no way to tell individual cell voltage. So make sure you're using a match set of cells that are same capacity, same brand and same age and just use them together in this light. I'll just show you this light compared to another 418650 light here, the BLF Q8, which is a recent favorite in the community. The Nightwalker, of course, is a slightly larger light. It has more thermal mass. It is much brighter, about two to three times as bright, and it can handle the output for a longer period of time than the BLF Q8. So I'll just show you some pictures here of how they compare. Now this is a shot of the BLF Q8 on maximum. I will be using the same exposure controls for all of these pictures. And here you can see it does a very good job. It lights those trees up out in the distance pretty well. 
But when we compare it against the Nywalker MM18 JR on turbo, you can see that it just blows the exposure completely away. It's just such so much more bright, especially up close with those big XHB 70.2 floods. Here's a comparison against the a Convoy C8, which is a dedicated thrower. And you can see the throw is comparable between the two. Of course, the Nywalker also has all that flood. And finally, here's a comparison with a smaller light, the Zebralight SC600 high intensity. This is a, a small light. Obviously, it doesn't have the kind of output on throw that the Nywalker does. And in fairness, most of the scene is lit up with the Nywalker. But, you know, it gives you an idea for an EDC light. Okay, we're just about to wrap this video up, but first I'd like to go through the pros and cons of this light. This light has a lot of pros, so let's go through them. The first is this light is shockingly bright, up to 13,500 lumens, which exceeds the manufacturer's spec of 10,000 lumens. Maybe I, my measurements are wrong, but this thing is very, very bright. The light has excellent construction. It can run on constant output on everything except turbo, so you have almost a 10,000 lumen constant output light, and all the modes are very well regulated. They don't drop very much. The light is extremely efficient due to those large XHP 70.2 emitters, and it has an efficient boost driver. The outputs are flexible. I like being able to choose between flood and throw. The user interface is very good. The tint is very good. It comes in a nice standard neutral white tint. The light tail stands, of course, and the LED switch indicator will give you a good warning for when to charge your batteries. The con is there's no low voltage protection of the light, so make sure you charge your batteries. Okay guys, I think I'll just wrap this up here, so thanks for watching.